meeting on November the 3rd, the effective Fed's funds rate of 0.08%. Welcome traders, it is 2 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time and we're going to get started here with this week's live trade and market analysis. Um, if you can hear me and you can see my screen, could you type a Y in the chat box please? A Y in the chat box, if you can hear me and see my screen. Great, thank you. Okay, before we jump into today's presentation, a couple of things. Uh, firstly, the risk disclaimer, obviously incredibly important and specific to uh, today's presentation is that the views expressed by me are uh, today are solely mine, they're not indicative of or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Uh, secondly, if, uh, if you have any questions as, uh, as I go through the charts, uh, if you can make a note of them and I'll open up a brief uh, Q&A at, uh, at the end of today's presentation and uh, happy to answer any questions you've got about any of the setups that I discuss. Or if you want me to take a quick look at a chart that I haven't covered, I'm happy to do that also. So, those of you who are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. Uh, after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets as I had some capital to play with and time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, that beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions. I basically gave back all my gains and ultimately uh, experience a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was going to be feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months to two years it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy. Oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my uh, mentoring and fund management, I'm engaged in other market-orientated projects. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. Uh, 
I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for three to five markets that I'm tracking. You can see uh, through the Tipmo blog here, uh, this is the daily market outlook posted for today. Give an in-depth breakdown, also cover the options, FX options that are in play, I give a technical overview, and then we look at the technical trade setup for uh, most of the FX majors there, and that's released every day at the London Open. Um, I also, now I, I'm actually a useful link for you guys if you're interested in following along um, with my trades. Uh, somewhere here we have, here we go. This, uh, this is where I post the daily videos uh, through TradingView, what, tracking setups that I'm watching in the market and trades that I'm managing or running. So uh, you can, I'll post some links here into the chat. Uh, with me. So you can follow along, uh, you can subscribe and get uh, notifications for the trade setups. A few of those we're going to be covering uh, today. And um, also, uh, I'm also now responsible for uh, running Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group. Uh, that's a Facebook private group where I provide a daily specific trade plan with um, uh, with updates with respect to the e-mini S&P 500. Um, I've been running that since April and have delivered over 1,300 points of profit. Um, we've also now opened up uh, the Tickmill Telegram, uh, Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram channel. Uh, you can see some updates from there. This week we've, uh, we've taken 41 and a half points out of the market, two and a, half, uh, two and a bit percent of upside. I will, um, I'll, I also, as I say, post a, a, a daily trade plan, which is a video in a video format. I live stream, let's see, where's one of those? There you can see um, the plan. I update levels and uh, what, I'm at, what I'm looking to, to trade for that day, the specific entry points. And I reference the, uh, the market internals that are required to, uh, to confirm those trades. And so for any of you who want to uh, join that channel, it's free to join. You just have to send through a request. I'll post that into the chat as well. And, uh, and so that's basically a flavor of, uh, of what I'm doing in terms of uh, my background and what I'm currently involved in. Um, what I want to do now is jump into the charts. Today, we're going to focus on the four-hour charts, and we're going to look at some imminent trading opportunities that I think will, uh, will develop in, uh, in the coming sessions. We're going to start with the e-mini S&P 500. Now, I trade this, um, this instrument actively on a daily basis, but I also position trade it as well, as I do with most of these uh, equity indexes. What we're tracking here now is a third wave extension um, that's pretty uh, pretty clear here. What I'm looking for now with this EMA S&P, and certainly today I'm going to be looking um, to, to get long on any pullbacks, I'm looking for a test here of the um, 3.618 extension of the wave two. That's a common level at which the third wave will terminate. Uh, what we have also to uh, that we want to see as we get into that area will be divergence between uh, the psych indicator here. So we don't want if we're, if this is if this is going to be our third wave target. We've also got the projected ascending trend line resistance third touch of that there. We've also got daily projected range resistance as well coming in there. So I'm looking for as an extension up into this area, looking for prices to fade there. Um, but importantly, we want to see that momentum divergence maintained. So uh, prices make the new high, but the uh, psych indicator doesn't make a new high. So that's an important confirmation if we're going to look to fade this move. Then what I'm looking for is a three-wave corrective move, similar in scope and scale to the wave two there. So from our wave three high, wherever we get that, we'll be looking for that equality pullback, ideally back in to test uh, this 45.80 area. And then from there, I'm going to be really looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side 
looking for a fifth wave extension up into um, this 4728 area, which is the 161 extension of our major wave, uh, wave four there. So that's my target. I'd really like to see this uh, correction play out over um, three day periods is, uh, is the optimum for a corrective phase. And then we look to re-engage on the long side and, uh, and play the favorable seasonality into the back end of the year, targeting that 47, uh, 28, 47, 30 area. And that's the major ascending trend line resistance as well. So that's gonna be a pivotal test. The NASDAQ have uh, been running, uh, running a, a significant long position in the NASDAQ. Um, I posted the daily chart where a daily reversal from our equality objective here. I'll just when I talk about equality, what I'm talking about is equal legs. So we have this leg here versus this leg here. And you can see we tested perfectly into, um, into that area. And then we, uh, we got the reversal and we again now we're in a third wave extension. What I'm looking for with the NASDAQ here is to trade into uh, 16,260 16, area. And then I'm looking for, again, importantly, want to see that, uh, that divergence maintained here. So we don't want the, uh, the psych indicator to make a new high. So we want that to be respected. Let's just go that level there. So as long as when we test this area, we don't have the psych indicator making a new high, then that sets up an opportunity to play the wave four consolidation. And again, what we're talking about is equality versus wave two at a minimum. And then we'll be looking for that fifth wave extension uh, to play on the long side again into the back end of uh, into the back end of this year. Dow, <coughs> Dow is sitting at trend line resistance here. So again, similar scenario. We're looking. It's not the the, the, um, the, pattern, the price pattern isn't quite as clean as it is in the uh, the e minis and the Nasdaq. But ideally, we get something like this now, and then we break and we get a fourth wave pullback equal again to our, um, equal again to this uh, potential wave two here. And then what we're always looking for in terms of the wave five is equal at a minimum to the, uh, the wave one. So we're thinking, or are we thinking about something like this? So pull back. And, and get that uh, that wave four to complete into uh, 35,300 area. And then we're going to be looking for bullish reversal patterns to target a fifth wave extension into the close of the year. Russell, this is one that I shared in the uh, on the TradingView platform. This is broken nicely now. And um, what we're looking for here is uh, the first pullback really now. And I'll be thinking in terms of, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we should see one more high here uh, is, the, is what I'm thinking. So we've got one, two, three. So something like this would be ideal. Maybe get up into the trend channel resistance zone. And then from there, we just will be watching for a correction equal in scope and scale to that move. And then we can start to think about the next leg to the upside. And certainly we want to think about something around there. So this is the uh, scenario we're watching for now in the Russell, Russell 2000 index. And um, <clears throat> so we want to see a trade up into this trend channel resistance. We want to see divergence play out and then a corrective move that comes somewhere back into the 2370s area. And then we look for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, thinking somewhere about a uh, 2500 test on the upside. DAX, very bullish, broken out, running long positions in this. And uh, we're looking for one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got the seven swing here, then we're looking for eight and then nine. And nine swings being an impulsive bullish move. So watching for the DAX to test into uh, 16,130 area. And uh, we have already broken, oh, well, we've got uh, the equality there in terms of the um, momentum divergence. So looking for momentum to start to roll over here, as we get that test, we look for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. And 
Initially, we'll be thinking about uh, equal legs, equality, sorry, in terms of that uh, pullback into this trend channel support. Third test, watch for bullish reversal patterns, long positions, and then we're, uh, we're up off to, again, to the upside, looking at that trend channel as a minimum upside objective coming in 16,400 area. The 10-year notes here have a nice five-way sequence developing. 10-year uh, notes, obviously, uh, as they adv advance in price, the yield of the 10-year treasury in the US declines. And when, treasure, uh, when the treasuries uh, themselves decline, the yield goes up. So we're looking for, uh, what I'm looking for here is an equality objective. So we have uh, versus this swing structure here. I'm looking for a test of 131.14, got weekly range resistance, got some prior lows, prior highs here. So bearish reversal patterns there set up a trade on the short side. And we measure up from our wave one here into our potential wave four high. That gives us a target then down at uh, down at 129.11, and that would see the 10-year yields rising into uh, into the back end of the year. So let me just draw that in for you. That. So we're looking at this equal legs objective to play out hit. Bearish reversal patterns, short positions, targeting a move down into, um, into that 129 area. And that would obviously see the 10 year yield rise as well. Dollar index <coughs> is, uh, is fighting to break this uh, trend line resistance here. And uh, if we can get a close through there, then we look for one more high in terms of the dollar index before we, uh, we see it roll over uh, more meaningfully. Um, it could be here that if we, if we hold the resistance in, the, in this type of, in the range that we're trading at the moment, then price might do a double correction here. So we could see prices back down into the support zone again. Um, let's see it drops in. So we're thinking about something like this for the dollar index hold and then we look for that test up into the 96 area uh, to the upside this stage we only i'd only be getting bearish on the dollar on a close back through um this trend line support which uh, which is the channel that's just been trading it's really grinding out it's uh it's slow going but um we look for or what i'm ultimately looking for is i'm looking for that one more high uh, to fade and then uh, and then i think the dollar downtrend uh, can kick back in Crude oil's got an interesting pattern here. We've held the equal legs pretty much again to the tick. So if we can get a close now through the descending trend line resistance, 84.29 there, um, then we're looking for a fifth wave extension. And I'll give you a target on that based on this potential wave four cycle here. So at a minimum, we're looking for 87 and we could be trading as high as 88.90, which is the 161 extension. The wave fives normally, uh, normally terminate in this area, the 161 extension, 127 extension. And if we think, or if we measure then uh, our potential wave one, we're gonna call uh, this wave one, and we overlay it versus our low here. So you can see we've got an equality objective wave, uh, fifth wave being equal to wave one, and we've got 127 extension. So 8730s are the next upside target on a close through 8430 in terms of crude oil. Bitcoin, looking uh, still bullish. And let's see, have we met the minimum objective for the correction here? No, we haven't. So we could be doing a double correction. So whilst we hold resistance there at uh, just above 64,000, what I'd like to see would be this scenario play out. So we get down into here and then wave four completes and we're off again to the upside. Got a daily target on Bitcoin um, to the upside of 75,000. So this could be a really nice entry point to, uh, to get in on that, uh, on that trade. So watch, uh, watch, actually, let's just see where that trend line comes in as well, because that could also be an opportunity. So if we're going to close through the trend line and through this um, potential um, W wave, uh, X3, w wave high, uh, 74, let's say 74,900. Then again, that could that would suggest that this correction is complete and we're off again to the upside. So just some key levels to keep in mind there uh, for those looking to get in on Bitcoin. 
Ethereum, very bullish new highs, and uh, we look for this cycle to continue. So any pullbacks at this stage that uh, that find support into the trend line are to be bought. And uh, we've got a 5,200 daily target, I think, uh, from memory on Ethereum. Let's just have a quick look on that. There we go. Yeah, so the target is 5,124 on, uh, on that break that we looked at on the daily time frame um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, dollar yen. <coughs> Still bullish. We can potentially pull back here a bit, but ultimately what I'm looking for is a break of this, uh, this bull flag now through 1433. And we have an upside objective uh, just shy of 116. So a couple of hundred pips to play for there on the upside in terms of dollar yen once we get through that X wave high. Alternatively, we could roll, we could come a bit deeper back into the midpoint before we get that extension, but certainly I'm looking on the long side in terms of dollar yen. Swissy sitting right on a, a daily trend line support here. And um, we'll see. So yeah, we tested this big daily trend line support. Got an initial reaction, um, yet to flip bullish here, but uh, any close back through uh, the 92 handle, uh, we can start to think about testing the ascending trend line resistance itself at 94. Um, alternatively, we could get a, an inverse head and shoulder scenario, scenario develop here where trade just through, then get a pullback here. So we have left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and that also would uh, would be a nice opportunity to get in and see if this Swissy can defend the um, daily trend line support and extend up into the target zone. Euro, want to be. Uh, I'm holding a short position from last week on that daily reversal, and uh, we corrected during the early part of this week. I'm now looking for a break of this trend line and the target on the euro. Let me just. Flip to the daily to give you that. So I've got a target here on the euro at 114 uh, is what I'm looking for. So uh, we'll see if we can break this consolidation. Um, alternatively, again, similar to the dollar index, we could be doing a double correction here. And uh, that would be moderately frustrating, but nonetheless, pattern remains the same. So we have an equal legs move like so. And, uh, and then we get the sell off. But let's see if we can get a close through these, uh, these, this trend, trend line um, support that's been in place, Sykes rolling over, and uh, the RSI stochastic is negatively orientated. So looking for 114.12 in the euro. Euro yen. <coughs> Still like this for one more test here. 131.19 is the area I'm watching. Got multiple equal legs completing there and just ahead of 50% retracement. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there through that trend line resistance, 132.40. And then we can start to think about 134.60 on the upside. Euro sterling, nice, uh, nice extension here um, today, obviously driven by the BOE, uh, disappointing markets. Watch 85.64 as potential resistance there, equal legs versus this current low. Looking immediate to Euro Aussie, this is what I'm watching. Uh, we've got a, a symmetry swing objective. Uh, so when I talk about symmetry swing, I'm talking about that wave two price uh, scale overlaid versus our potential wave three. So watching for uh, bearish reverse patterns, 156.70, and then I'm looking for a fifth wave extension to the downside equal to the wave one from our wave four would actually put us down into the 151.60 area. Uh, that's your time, okay for now. Euro Kiwi, this one was sitting on that weekly trend line, it pierced through it, um, but now is starting, is potentially putting in an inverse head and shoulders here. I'm watching this on any break through 163.20. Certainly, you can think about 164, uh, 164.60s, which is the uh, symmetry swing objective versus this swing here. So let me just draw that in so you can see what exactly I'm talking about. So we have that. And then if you overlay that, very much. 
So that's what we'll be thinking about and move into that area. And then uh, we'll see if show, uh, <coughs> sellers show up again for another leg to the downside. But looking, uh, looking at a counter trend long here in the Euro Kiwi. Sterling hammered by the Bank of England today. And I'm looking for Sterling to get down into the 133 area and complete its major equal leg. So if I zoom out here, you can see we have an A, B, and a C, a quality objective, down to 133.17. This stage, to invalidate that, you need to close back through this trend line resistance, then you can start to think about test up into the 138s. But it's uh, bearish for now. <clears throat> Sterling Aussie, I'm looking for equal legs here versus this current low, but descending pitchfork resistance coming in. So 184.70 would be an opportunity to re-engage on the short side. And then we think about five equals one, uh, which would put us down into uh, 179 handle. So that's one that's uh, certainly on the radar. Radar, sorry. Okay. Sterling Yen is testing, pivotal test of support here. If we close back through this uh, 154, which is the 161 extension of this current move, then we'll be thinking about trend line resistance tests. So we've got this high volume node, 152. Uh, so watching didn't get uh, quite well. The there was it, it did signal here on the hold of the um, of the 132 there. But uh, if you're in that trade and uh, you're adhering to the rules, then you would be risk free on the 50% uh, retracement there of the potential Y leg. So uh, this is, we'll see if Sterling can catch a bid here, Sterling Yen, um, or otherwise we start to think about a break through 154 for that 152. Sterling Swiss also sitting on that major uh, trend line resistance on the daily. That's I've posted that to TradingView so you can have a look at that uh, in your own time, but uh, potential five waves completing there now. So we want to see a recovery back through uh, the trend line resistance to get constructive on the potential for Sterling Swiss to have um, completed. Let me just jump to the data and you can see it clearly. So that's what I'm thinking about here. If we get it closed back above that trend line, um, we could be in for, uh, for a decent move to the upside. Equally, we close below the trend line. And then uh, we'd be thinking more about short strategies for uh, Sterling Swiss. So uh, through the Aussie, looking for the Aussie to roll out, uh, correct basically here back into uh, this 73 area. And then we can start to think about testing the trend line. Aussie yen. <clears throat> so I'm looking for the Aussie yen here now to uh, correct. This is our wave three high. Then we want to think about a wave four, like so. Let's just Tidy that up a bit. So if this is wave three, wave four would be buying opportunity to get a trend line test up at 87. So keeping an eye on Aussie yen, Kiwi. That's going nowhere fast. Let's go, let's actually jump back to the four hour and see. Uh, Kiwi. Kiwi yen is the better setup. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got. This wave, uh, wave four consolidation in play. Ideally, what we get now is a test here. Let's just give you these. So we have A, B, and we have C, quality objective. So any move um, back through now these, uh, these 8190 area should see us take out the trend line resistance and trade up for a wave five extension to the upside. Um, and target for that is a minimum. Eighty-two ninety up to 83.50. Last but not least, this is the, uh, the dollar round trade that's, uh, that we've been running. And I'm looking now for a correction in this. So you could see this type of move now find buyers here, and then we can think about this run back through the highs, and ultimately we look up for a move into the uh, 16 handle, or just shy of 16, in terms of the dollar rands. So that's the whistle-stop tour of the setups that I'm watching and anticipate uh, to develop in the coming sessions, essentially looking for a bit of a correction here in terms of the indices. 
And then we're looking to get in on the long side uh, to play for that, uh, that year end bump. Um, and we are short term looking for one more high in the dollar index and then uh, looking for that to roll over. Um, so that, that obviously that will feed into the uh, the FX majors, the Euro, Sterling, et cetera, and the Aussie, looking for corrections there before we, we look to the next leg to the upside. Um, with that said, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat box, that's helpful, as I know we're all on the same page and, uh, and we can wrap the session up here. Okay, I shall take the silence as, uh, as that there aren't any questions. Um, feel free to join me in the Tickmill Futures Facebook group. Follow the uh, daily trade setups through the TradingView link. I'll just repost those again. And for those who have a Tickmill uh, funded account, you can join me in the Telegram group for uh, real-time updates. Okay, thanks very much everyone for your time. I hope you found this, uh, this helpful and I'll catch you all again same time next week.